morning everybody and uh, welcome to morning prayer on Thursday the 13th of August. Um, I'm here at St John's this morning uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first reason, I don't know whether you can see behind me right down in the aisle there, I don't think you can quite see it, but I've brought up a new wheelbarrow. It's very exciting. Um, and thank you to Graham from Cheetahs here in the village, the funeral directors, who have donated to us a lovely brand spanking new wheelbarrow, um, which is uh, going to be so useful in the churchyard when trying to clear up right down the bottom and then you've got to bring things right up the top here. Um, so that's fabulous, thanks Graham. Um, and the other reason I'm here is it's nice and cool. It's lovely in here, this old stone buildings. Um, if you're getting too hot, uh, then St John's is the place you want to be. It's a, it's a little bit cooler here. So um, this morning, morning prayer. If you are wanting to follow uh, with the additional readings for morning prayer this morning, the psalm set for today is Psalm 56, 5, 6, um, and also 57 if you would like. Our Old Testament reading um, comes from the book of 1 Samuel verses 21 to 22 5 so that's the whole of chapter 21 and then the first five verses of chapter 22 of 1 Samuel and when we get there the reading that I will be reading this morning is from Acts and it's Acts chapter 2 22 to 36 Chapter 2, 22 to 36. So, in the coolness of St. John's, let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our reading from, um, from Acts. Actually, I will just read the canticle first, which comes from Isaiah chapter 42. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the glory, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And so our scripture reading this morning from Acts, chapter 2, 22 to 36. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the def definite plan and foreknowledge of God, who crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David said concerning him, 
I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would be put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke to the re of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hazes, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend to the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I don't know about you, but I would find that reading quite difficult, um, if read on its own, out of context, as, as it is this morning. Um, if you were following Morning Pray, you would have read through that story and how we got there. So this is Peter speaking, not Paul, so we're early on in the Book of Acts, and it's Peter talking to the crowds. And he's speaking just after the Holy Spirit has come upon him and the Apostles. If you remember that day of Pentecost that we celebrate, um, Peter and the disciples are sitting in the upper room, they've locked themselves in, um, they're, they're just praying. Jesus has been crucified, he's died, he's risen again, they've all seen him, um, but he's gone back to the Father and he has said as he went back, as he went up at Ascension, uh, Ascension Day that we celebrate always on a Thursday, um, and he said, I will send you an advocate, a helper, um, wait. And so they've been waiting in the upper room to, to see what happens and they, they really don't know. They've, they've listened to everything Jesus has told them. Um, they've, obviously, they've seen the miracle of him being resurrected, um, but they're still not quite sure what's going to happen next. And suddenly, on that day of Pentecost, uh, the Holy Spirit comes down. It's like tongues of fire on their head. Um, and if you remember in the story, they, they spill out of the upper room into the streets, which are really busy. Um, because it's um, a celebration of, of harvest time at, uh, in, in Jerusalem. There are people from all over the world, uh, all, uh, all over areas from around, and, and there's a whole long list, if you read it, of, of all the places that they've come from. They're all in the streets of Jerusalem, so there, there's thousands of people, and the disciples spill out um, and uh, begin to talk in those different languages and people are amazed and they say gosh um, they must be drunk because they're so exuberant and they're so excited and they're speaking all these different languages it must be drink and Peter says no we are not drunk we are drunk on the Holy Spirit and let me tell you about why and this is what we've heard this morning so he's telling those who are listening in the streets um, about Jesus and where Jesus comes from. And a lot of these people, the majority, will be Israelites, Jewish people, 
And so he is exhorting to them the Old Testament, saying, look, our ancestor David told us about this. This is what's happened. This is what David told us would happen. So he is trying to explain to them uh, about Jesus. And as we read on, we will find that over 3,000 of them are baptised into the new faith of Jesus Christ. Um, not yet to be called Christians, soon to be called Christians. Christ's ones, belonging to Christ. Um, so that's what's happening in that story. So it made me think about um, what it is that that um, informed my faith at the beginning. I wasn't brought up as a Christian. My parents were not Christians. Um, so I didn't come to it until later in life, in my um, 20s. Um, obviously, I heard about the Bible and all of that sort of thing as you do through school, but I hadn't taken that faith on as my own and, until I got to my 20s. And I think the thing that, for me, and the way that perhaps I work or my brain works, um, was having it laid out to me by um, a wonderful um, vicar where I, in the area where I lived, and I, I went to chat with her with some other young people. And she told me that I didn't, um, that Jesus Christ was a real person. And I hadn't really comprehended that, that history tells us that he was a real person. Not just the Bible. Um, I might, like other non-Christians, poo-poo the Bible a bit. That's because I hadn't studied it. And since then I've studied it and, and I know the study the, the Bible to be the truth and the historical truth. But at that time, the Bible was just something those strange Christian people read. Um, but she showed me other things, um, other historical uh, readings, um, books, uh, like the writings of Josephus, who was a historian at the time. And other people outside of the Bible wrote about Jesus. He is a historical fact, a real person. And I think that just blew my mind. Uh, that it wasn't just a story and those stories perhaps I just heard at school a bit like Sunday school where you get all the best stories read to you and, and they're just stories and suddenly Jesus became for me a real person because people who were there at the time wrote about him and whether you believed at the time that he was the son of God or not the historical facts are there and uh, and they were written at the time and we still have those writings uh, we know that Jesus was a real person and then the faith bit comes in when you read further you read your Bible more you understand more you read some uh, writings around the Bible um, and you get to know more and you learn more and then your faith grows well oh, that's how it was for me I wonder what it is. What is it in your life, your faith life, that suddenly moved those stories, perhaps you went to Sunday school, or perhaps you just heard them at school, what moved your faith from those stories, which we all like to tell, particularly the Christmas story, what moved your faith from stories to a reality? Perhaps you haven't thought about that for a while. Um, maybe that's something you'd like to think about. What is it that moved your faith from childhood stories to a living, breathing, working, everyday faith? Have a think. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray for all people in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your church worldwide, for all Christian people. We pray for all who lead and teach and minister in those, in those churches. All those who are teaching others about their faith. We pray for all those people new to the faith, just exploring. 
We pray for young people learning about Christ in their Sunday schools or in their schools. And we pray that Christ would become a real person to them and that their faith would grow. We pray for the ministry of our own churches here in St John in North Baddersley, in All Saints, in St Denis in Chilworth, in St Mark in Anfield. We pray for all our congregations in our churches and online, for our communities around us. We pray that we may be nourished in our faith and our understanding and that we would bear daily witness to Christ's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for nations around the world, for those who take authority to serve the cause of justice and human well-being. We pray that you would strengthen them with gifts of wisdom, courage and integrity, that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for those countries who are afflicted by natural disaster, caught up in brutal conflicts or any other kind of disaster, praying particularly this week for the peoples of Lebanon. We pray for all who have been caught up in that dreadful blast in the port area, for all who have lost loved ones. We pray for all of those injured. And we pray for the many, many thousands who have lost their homes, their livelihoods and all their possessions. We pray for the ongoing ramifications in that government. We pray for the people of Syria next door who relied on that port. We pray for all countries where food is scarce, where jobs are even fewer. And we pray for all of those whose only option is to leave and try and seek a life somewhere else. We pray for all migrants, refugees and asylum seekers. That wherever they find themselves, they will be treated with compassion and love for all that they have lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of those in our own communities around us, praying for families during the school holidays, for all of those who have been affected by this pandemic of illness or financially, We pray for all who are suffering from loneliness or who have lost loved ones. We pray for all of those amongst our own and those that we hold dear in our hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would raise them from despair to hopefulness and help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember with thanksgiving all those who have died. Praying for families who face funerals in these coming weeks. For all who mourn, who remember loved ones particularly at this time of year. And we give thanks for all of those who have been such a part of our lives and that we see no more. 
Lord, strengthen all who mourn with the sure hope that in Christ their loved ones are raised to a fullness of life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for this week, the ninth week after Trinity. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a good week. Keep cool.